into the book of Psalm. The book of Psalm 67. Psalm 67. Praise the Lord. Psalm 67. We want to talk this morning about the purpose of praise. The reason why we get that into the church. The reason why we wake up and we left our home and we get, we, we head back into the house of God. We came in here this morning for a reason and for a purpose. There are so many religious things around today, people that don't understand why they go to church. People think that going to church is a religious thing. It's something to just go and then come back home and they say, okay, I've been to church, I've seen, I've had the word of God. But I'm going to talk to you today about the purpose of leaving your home and coming to into the house of the Lord. The power of praise. And when we understand the reason and the purpose why we come to church, nobody has to tell us to come to church. Because we know that our God is a great and mighty God and He has done great and mighty things in our life. He ministered to us and we want to minister back to Him. To minister men to do service. To do service. Not like God do service to us. God made himself our good shepherd and his service of in every area of our lives. We've been talking before about the love of God. We talk about faith in God. That faith that cannot walk without love and that faith which is impossible without pleasing. In you order know for you to please God, you have to have faith. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. That without this faith, you cannot please God. And faith is your corresponding action as you act upon what God has said or is commanding us to do. Faith is believing the word of God and acting upon that word which he has said. Today I'm going to talk about the power of praise and the purpose of being in church. And I want us to read from verse 67 of Psalm. Chapter 67, I mean, of Psalm. And I want to start from Psalm, I mean, verse 5. In this passage of scripture, God opened our understanding to see the reason why we have to come into his house. In fact, can, I, can we read it together? If you are there, can you shout hallelujah with me? Hallelujah. Amen. In verse 5, he said, let the people praise thee, O God. Verse 7. 
and all the hands of the heart shall fear him. We are the people of God. And now I want you to understand something here. When the psalmist wrote this passage of scriptures, he was writing during the time of the Old Testament. In during those days, majority of people are fishermen, farmers, and all is all about the increase of the heart. He's talking about the soil of the heart. He's saying, then shall the heart we yield the increase. Remember, God caused the heart for man's sake in the beginning. When the man, the first Adam, when he rebelled, Adam and Eve are messed up. And the Bible says, God said, cost me the heart for your sake. Now you will struggle, you will labor, you will work hard. And they push them out of the garden of healing. See, God blessed man. See, many people don't understand. God did not cost man. He caused the ground. See, many people think, ah, God caused. No, God did not cause his creation. He caused the ground. that gathered to him, that called him his people, the children of Israel, the only way they can be different among all nations is when they give him praises and worship. During the time of praises and worship, when everybody couldn't yield, get the fruit of the land, or yield an increase in their life, and the soil, the heart is not bringing increase, because the people of God who are separated unto God, worshiping them, their life is different. That's why the children of Israel is mighty. They were mighty upon their heart during that time. They know and they learn how to worship and how to praise God. They have a, a, a temple for God. When the whole world were worshiping idols, having their own idol, having their own God, the Bible says the nation of Israel is the only one who belongs to the God Almighty. So the science here, the science is saying, let the people praise you, O Lord. Let all the people praise you. He says, so then shall the heart, the ground that has been caused, yield a increase. And the Lord our God shall bless us. Why? Because we are acknowledging God in our life. So many times we have experienced the blessing of God. We have experienced the, the goodness of God. We have seen how great God has been to us. In spite of our shortcomings, in spite of our rebellions, in spite of all those bad things that we have done. We still see the blessing of God upon our life and we say, wow. Even before we came to Christ, when we were without God, we still see the sun shining upon us, the rain is falling. They say the Bible says, the rain falls upon the just and the unjust, and the sun shines upon the just and the unjust. We see the goodness of the Lord. Before we came to Christ, some of us could have been dead in our sin. But God was still protecting us because we have a destiny. And when we enter into Christ, the Bible says our hearts now pop up and say, wow. And then we begin to see in the past, wow, we have been all that. Have you ever noticed all those things you did in the past? And then you said to yourself, wow, I was a bad dude. <laughs> Man, I did all that. I was that. A drug head. Man. Because during that time you were doing those bad things, you were in darkness. You are death is scared in your eyes. You are a dead man walking. You are a living. See, people that are without Christ, they are dead men walking. They don't see the hope. The Bible says the God of this world has blinded the eyes of those who do not believe. And I'm saying, I'm bringing this message today so that we can know the importance of coming to church. Listen, God ministered to us. He ministered to all our needs. 
For sick people, you want them to be well. For people who are, are not getting all their needs, needs men, you say, I want to supply all your needs. God is about caring for his people. God is about supplying the needs of his people. God is about making you the head and not the tail and making you above, not the neck. God is for you. That's why the Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? Your, the purpose of God in your life is to prosper you. God wants to see you rejoicing. God do not want to see tears in your eyes because it's your father. And you want to see good things happen in your life. He had a destiny for you. He said before you were falling in your mother's womb, I knew you and I had a plan for you. And the plan that I have towards you is not an evil plan. But the plan that I have towards you is the plan to give you hope and a future. Just like you have the plan for your kids. You want good things to happen to your kids. I've never seen a parent that want a bad thing to happen to their kids. But God said, I have a plan for you. And Jesus announced this. He said, look here. The thief who came to steal, to kill, and to destroy is Satan. I'm not the one that came to destroy you. I'm not the one that comes to steal from you. I'm not the one that didn't come to make your life miserable. He said, but I came to give you life. And to give you an abundant life. I don't know about you. I want an abundant life. I want a life of peace. I want a life of joy. That is why he said, I will give them back at peace. Those whose mind is staying on me. Because why? I have your present help. Trouble. Don't run away from me. Come towards me. Even when you are going through challenges in your life, when you are going through your shortcoming, when you mess up, when you are in disobedience and rebellion, God say, I'm not waiting to kill you or to destroy you or to spend you. I'm waiting for you like a prodigal son to come back home. He has judged Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ took your past, your present, and your future sin upon himself. Jesus Christ suffered so much for you to have an abandoned life. He went through the cross. Yes, your salvation is free. Your redemption is free. But he cost the only son of the beloved son of God his life. He cost him his blood. He cost him the
Satan knows that the only way to get the people of God out of the church is to give them fake bread, fake manners, things that do shine but it's not gold. Listen, I encourage you. One tree cannot make the forest. You cannot be a low ranger. God wants to do great things for us. But one thing that God told me when He set me free, He says, Let the people praise you, O Lord. Let all the people praise you. He says, The heart will yield an increase. The Lord our God will bless us. In the Old Testament, He was referring to those people who are farmers, fishermen, people who are, the, who are waiting for the yield of the soil. But in the New Testament, the heart that God is talking about today is talking about our hearts. It's not talking about the ground no more. Listen, we are in the dispensation of grace. Are you with me? We are in the dispensation of grace. God's house is not made with what? Hands no more. God is not about the building no more. God now is about our hearts. You know why God wants you to be in church? Honey, listen, I would rather be in church Henry in the morning, worship, praise, and give him adoration and go home. That for me to come to church when prayer, praise, and worship have been finished. And you just want God to minister to you. But you are not minister to Him first. See, you do Him service. You give Him praise, heaven, hope on your behalf. You worship Him. As you worship Him, He hope on heaven and pour blessing upon you. The, your heart. Listen. You see this heart that you have in the soul, in the whole testament, in the ground. Because the Old Testament people do not have the Holy Ghost inside their hearts. The New Testament people, because why the Old Testament people do not have the Holy Ghost in their heart? Because Jesus has not yet come and they have not yet been crucified and died. It was after Jesus' death that he sent the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost came to live in our heart. The Holy Ghost do not live in a head, in a, in a, in a building made with heads no more. Our heart now is the house of God. That is why the Bible says that our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> so, from within our heart, when you come to church early, I preach this sermon in my own church, the Chapel of Restoration. And when you are giving praise and worship to God, when you are lifting him up on high and exalting the name, you are ministering to our God. The only time you minister to God in church is during the time of praise and worship. Every other time is God ministering to you. Because when I'm preaching right now, God is the word. You don't need nobody to, you know, he's the word. So when I'm preaching the word, it's not for him, it's for us. The word is for us. The word is about daily bread. The word is a fresh manner. He want to sow he corrupt the seed of his word of life into our heart so that our life will be transformed, we can be changed and become the person that he predicts us to be. But if your heart is hardened, Watch this. If your heart is hardened, I can preach this word. You can be in church for 50 years and you still be the same person. Have you ever noticed old school saying people that still the same? They tell you, I've been in this church before, before your mama had you. But they're still doing the same thing they did 20, 90 years ago. They are religious people. You know why? Because they come to church in their own time, in their own ways. 
And the reason why God is saying that, the reason why God is saying that is because your heart must be breaking. The Bible says, break up your final ground. Break up your final ground. See, before the farmer, in the heavy, in the heavy, in the heavy holy days, they will burn the bush on the ground. They will burn the bush, they will pry the ground. They will fertilize the ground before they can put soil on the ground. So that that soil, that, that seed that they were putting on the ground can bring God good during the harvest time. You see, the yam that we have today is look like all this little yam. That time they have the people who yam because he's bringing the increase. Are you with me? Have you got a idea about Jacob? When he was taking sheep, his sheep was robots. I mean, look at them. Because he knows how to minister unto God. See, you, the horror in that time, I think, I'm not, I'm not saying this is for me. I think the horror might be like a basketball game. That you have to, you have, you have to pick up the horror. To put the horror. That, that's how good the ground works. That's how pain that the ground works. So, what God is saying is that, when you are praising me, now that God is living in our heart, your heart must be applied, must be, you know, we came from all the works of life, different spirit of the world. We woke up and we come into the house of God. The first thing is, God, the Bible said, the preparation of the heart belongs to God. God wants to prepare your heart first. How did He prepare your heart? When you are lifting up your voice of praise and worship, you are getting your heart ready for the good, incorruptible seed of the world. Do you know why the Bible says, Paul planted a pool of water? God is the one that brings the hindrance. Your lifestyle, all the challenges, all the struggles, everything that you are going through in your life, the reason why you fall off and you say, Wow, I don't smoke no more, I don't drink no more, I don't cough no more. Wow, wow. Because you have been allowing God to prepare your heart. You have been giving Him praise and worship of your heart. Ah, my dear brothers and sisters, I'm a worshiper. When you come about worshiping and praise, that is my life. I love to worship. I love to praise. So that when the man of God will begin to declare the incorruptible seed of His word, I'm, I'm just consuming. I'm just consuming. And you know what happened? God is working. The Bible says God will work all things together for your good. The better thing that the enemy is bringing to your life, when you begin to praise and worship, Satan cannot stand in the midst of worship. All the bad spirit, all the things that the enemy wants to bring into you to get you down, you got to be loose. That's why it is very, very important that our first priority the hear the calling. When I was preaching this in our, in our own church, I was saying, hey, I would rather be in church early during the time of prayer, worship, and give them thanks. And then I can go home and read the Bible because we will fall upon the good ground. Because I'm lifting them up in praise and worship. Why do we have to be together? The Bible says, where two or three are gathered together in my name. In the midst of them, I will be. That is why I'm not commanded us not to forsake the assembly of ourselves together with our people. Don't say, ah, I can do it, I can watch TV, I can be by myself at home. And then God saying, you are allowing the enemy to deceive you. Don't you know that I said in my word, in the Psalm 133, it is good for brethren to dwell together in unity. He said, in their midst, God said in their midst, I will what? Command my blessing. Psalm 133, I believe. He said in their midst, I will command my blessing. That's what the Bible says. I don't want to know about you. But if you look quickly into that Psalm 133, you will see the promise of God in Psalm 133. In verse 1. Two and three of oh, that Psalm 133, it says, Behold, if you dare shout hallelujah. hallelujah. 
I said, you did, say hallelujah. hallelujah. He said, behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the blood, even the Aaron's blood, that went down to the scum of his garment. Now, look at that story. Verse 3 says, as the dew of heaven, and as the dew that descended upon the mountain of Zion, hallelujah, for there, look at what he said in the last phrase, for there the Lord will command the blessing in your life forevermore. In the presence of the unified people. Because God, our Lord Jesus Christ, is the head of the body of the church. He functions in the midst of his people as the head. Have you ever seen the head say, okay, I don't need you, I will walk by myself? They look, they will be left saying, you know, you can't walk without me. And then the eyes say, hey, even though you got the left head, how are you going to see the world know where you're going? So, here come the head saying, oh, wait a minute, even though I have so smart, I can think, I can be wise, but I don't have the leg to go to where I want to go, and I don't even have the heights. So I'm going to need the heights, and I'm going to need the leg. And the leg say, I can't even do without the heights. And then the head say, huh? Look at you guys. You guys are going somewhere. Hey, you'll be run out by the car. Because when you hear the horn, you can't hear nothing. You're going to need your hear to hear when the car is coming. So, you have a choice. All the body part is needful. And God is saying, it's the same thing with the body of Christ. We can't say we can do it by ourselves. Every body part Every member of the body will be together for the church to function because Jesus is the head of the church. Amen? Amen. In the time that Paul and Silas looked at Acts chapter 16, the book of Acts, Acts of our Apostles, chapter 16. I want us to see something so powerful. Acts chapter 16. Hallelujah. In the book of Acts chapter 16, we see where Paul and Silas during their ministry, they, 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 they cast the spirit. The spirit of divination that a lady, a dancer was using to bring gains to her master. And they keep on, that spirit keep on harassing them and following them and say, these are the people of God, the ministers of God in Acts chapter 16. And then, because of what Paul and Silas did by casting out that divination spirit and the master lost all the profit, they then against Paul and Silas. Say these people came from their own country and they came to trouble us. They came to teach us some wrong form because he lost all the money that he was making through that spirit of divination. So because of this, they got them down. They, they took them. They, they put them. They said these people came to trouble us. So they put Paul and Silas in prison. The Bible say they put, they, they put stuff in their hands. And look at this. The Bible says that. In verse 24, 22. First of all, in verse 21, the Bible says, These people they teach custom, verse 21, that these people they teach custom which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, observe being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrate let out their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many strike upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer, the God, to keep them safely. Who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison. He put them in a dungeon and made their feet fast in the stuff, put anchor on their hands and their feet. Look at verse 25. The Bible says, on verse 25, 
And at midnight, at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto who? Unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And look at what happened on verse 26 that we have in our life today. The Bible said, and suddenly there was a heart going so that the foundation of the prison was shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's hands were loose. And the keeper of the prisoner waking up of his sleep and seeing the prisoner door open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoner had been fled. But Paul in verse 28 cried with a loud voice, saying, Do that self no harm, for we were all here. Then they called for a light and stand in and come trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sir. What must I do to be saved? I got to be saved. The whole man died. I put you in prison. I locked you home. I got you bound. But all of a sudden, the Bible said, instead of Paul and Silas, instead of mourning and complaining, Paul could have said to Silas, I think we miss God. What are we doing here? If God is for us, why are we doing in prison? You know what the Bible says? That instead of them complaining, they were giving praises and worship to God. Many of us today, when something happened to us, oh, the devil is alive. We start complaining, we start murmuring, we start whining. Why is God allowing this to happen to me? But the Bible says they begin, they know their weapons. They were being trained in their weapons. Oh, you, you know, the devil is trying to influence these people to bound them. We already know why you want to talk to the devil. You don't have business talking to the devil. Do your job. Take your weapon. And you say, Father, how brave is you? How worship. I know this is going to go. Do you know that? Because of your praise and worship, the Bible says, suddenly there was an earthquake. Heaven broke up and said, Wait a minute. I hear somebody is talking and I'm saying, Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. That's what they heard. I'm not I'm just saying that. I don't know what they were saying in prison. I'm just saying that this Bible says, Glory, glory, hallelujah. And then the Bible says, that what all of a sudden that was halfway. When something is happening in your life, when tragedy comes, uh, when tragedy is taking you, when you are in a situation that, that you seem like you're hope, you have a, situ a hopeless situation, all you got to do is say, I have a great and mighty God. Uh, God who is able uh, to make all things work together for my good. Uh, God who is able to take my situation. Uh, I fear not. Uh, I will look under the hill uh, from where come all my help. Uh, because my help comes from the Lord uh, who created the heaven and heart. He will give me a breakthrough. He will open down where there seems to be no way. He will make a way for me because my God is good. He is for me. I need God for me. Who can be against me? Yeah. Worship him and give him praise. Give him adoration. Don't thank him for what he has done. And watch God. Watch God. What does God say? Oh, my people is worshiping me. Your worship, do you know your worship and your praise is your act of your, your worship? Worship is that your act of faith is your corresponding action instead of you because the thing that comes against you comes to bring fear in your life and to cause you to be faithless. But when you begin to worship and praise, you are saying, I fear not. Even though mountains are the path and the hills they remove it. But his kindness shall not depart from me. Who are you, O oh, mountain, before me? You shall be like a plane. You will speak to that mountain. And you will lift up your voice and worship and praise. The Bible says, in the midst of your worship, Satan cannot stand. While you are worshiping and praising him, you are going, let me get out of here. The spirit that, you know, some of us, that's why we have to keep on praising. Because Satan says, let me get out of here. When you come out of the church, you come and meet me at home. You know, you will come and meet me at home, so I can't go to church with you. Some of us have all those demons that want to come around and want to mess us up, and they say, well, I can't go to church because in your church, is fire hanging, and I can't stand you when you pray the Lord. But come back home, because I know at home, you don't pray, you tap dancing. You know, you 
you worship the enemies, you worship the gurus of the world. So I know where I'm going to teach you. But my advice to you, keep praising the Lord. It's not only for you to use it as a weapon of massive destruction to the enemy, it's also because of what God has done for you. Let me ask you a question. Has God done some great things in your life? If God has done great things in your life, it's time to give Him praise. Your praise and worship, you are acknowledging Him. You are giving Him what is due to Him. You are saying, This is the day that the Lord has made it. I'm going to rejoice and I'm going to be glad in it. Because David said, I was glad when you said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Be glad when you start to go to church. Because this is an opportunity to bless your Lord. Listen. Come with me to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. I'm saying we are going to hear the word. The word is going to work in our life. That is why we are the prayer, the worship, and the word church. And we trust God that everything in our life will follow. Our part is not to do works because all of our works are filthy. We become religious. But when we give our heart to Him, after we have worshiped and praised Him and get our heart tender for the world coming, then when our life change, when we see our life change, we know it was Him that changed our life. I know that He was God that set me free from drug addiction. From prison, from all a lot of things in my life. And I'm still shy. There's still a lot of things that I want God to do for me. Yeah. But I refuse to focus on my shortcoming. My focus is in the world and in praise and worship. And great things is coming. Amen? Amen. Look at Colossians chapter 1, right? Now. Verse 4. Let us read together, brother. Can you are there? Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 12. Let me show you the reason why you praise God. It's Colossians chapter 1. I mean, let us read from verse 12. Everybody there? Yes. Shout glory. glory. Somebody shout glory. glory. Hallelujah. Okay, in verse 12, the Bible says the reason why you are giving thanks is giving thanks unto the Father. That's our God. Giving thanks to the Father, which had Qualify us is King James. It said, "Make us meet." That word, "make us meet," means qualify us. So he says, "The reason why you be giving thanks to the Father, we are qualify us to do what? To be partakers of what? Of His inheritance." Listen carefully. The Bible says. Who qualify her to be a partaker of his inheritance? What is that inheritance? That inheritance is Jesus Christ and everything that he created. All the blessing of life. God said, The reason why you should be given thanks, the goodness of God in your life. Has God been good to you? That is why you should be given thanks. That is why you should be in his house. That is why you should be living in the home and minister to him and worship. That is the reason why I have to wake up even though my daddy know how to get up from the bed. That is why on me, on Saturday, I'm already dressed up. I already know the clothes I'm wearing. I'm already meditating about the scripture I'm going to preach. I'm going to preach about that because of the goodness of God in my life. So my body cannot make, make it. You know, on Sunday, no, you don't have no choice. Just like when you get a job, you ain't got no choice. If you want to, if you want to get paid, you gotta go to work. And if you say you don't want to go to work, then the Bible says, "Eat that do not work, let him not eat." You're not gonna eat because you don't want to work. So we know that God will prepare. And supply all our need. If we fear men and we don't want to get fired, coming late to work, do you know how many times you have to rush? Sometimes you forget to even brush your teeth because you don't want to be late. You don't want to be late. 
And then you say, you get into the car and say, eh, oh, can't you brush my teeth? Hallelujah. <laughs> so you just, you, just, you, just, you just have to stop by the store and buy some bubble gum. Buy some bubble gum to, clean, to, 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 to brush your up. Because you try to get to work on time. Because you know that this is how I pay my bills. I don't have time to wait. Then, what about the one that is blessing us? What about the one that is keeping us? What about the one that is keeping us away from the things that we don't even see with our eyes? All the dangers on the highways. All of the sudden there was an accident that is an that about to happen and God is making you to lose your cell phone and then you have to go back for your cell phone. The reason why you went back for your cell phone was not because you purposely left your cell phone but God allowed you to lose and to leave that cell phone so that it can deliver you from that thing that you do not see, that accident that is in the front. And you get mad when, they, when you are about to cross the railroad and the train came. And you start cussing. Hey, I'm going to be late. And you see, but if that train did not stop you, you don't know what God has done to allow the train to pass by. You have to be patient and wait because there's a thing that the enemy has set before you and God is trying to make you not to get into that problem. But you get mad because we have the understanding that God is working. Every lateness in your life, there is a reason. Patient is working, bringing perfection to your faith. God said, Do you see that? Look at, let us look at the last word. Giving thanks unto the Father, which has called the Father to be partaker of his inheritance of the saints in the light. Look at what he has done for you. Verse 13. Who have delivered us from where? From the power of darkness. God delivered us from the power of darkness and what? And has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. In whom we have what? Redemption through what? Through his blood, the forgiveness of all sin. Look at what God has done for you. This is enough to say, I cannot stop praising him. He said, Give the thanks of the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has qualified us to be a partaker of his blessing, his inheritance, and he delivered me from the power of darkness and translated me into the kingdom. I'm the child of the kingdom. I'm the king in the kingdom of God. Jesus is the king of kings. You are king, you are priest. King of priests, we need to lift up our voice of praise to the king of kings and the Lord of God. Let him be Lord over our life. And watch what God will do for you. And then, he said, in whom we have redemption, we'll be brought out. We are not going to hell. Oh, hallelujah. You don't know what God has done. You see, let me tell you thing, because I don't have no diamond in my pocket. I don't have no big old house. That is not the issue. You should be praising God that if I die today, I will be with the angel. I will see God. Hey, hey. Hallelujah. That alone is a place of joy that has been set free. And if I die today, I'm not going to break hell hope. I'm going to break heaven hope. I'm going to be among the saints. I'm going to be among those people who is dead and night, yelling and shouting and praising the Lord. Yes. To be absent from the body yes. is to be present with the Lord. Yes. That if I'm absent in this life, I'm going to be right in the face of God Almighty. Yes. That alone so good, right? That alone give me the motivation that I got to go to his house and worship him. And look at Psalm 103. Let me go to Psalm 103. Let me tell you what the Psalm is saying. Psalm 103. Let me go to Psalm 103 and see what Psalm the Psalm is saying. Come and look at the benefit of that. Psalm 103. I believe we are getting the word to this morning. The word of God. Sometimes it's good to get the pen and paper and write all the scriptures so you can go back home and meditate more upon it and the word can just soak into your back. And you can just understand what God is doing. Listen to Psalm 103. If you are there, shout hallelujah. The Bible says the Sabbath begin to 
Lord will hold my what? Hold my soul. All that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, hold my soul. And look at what it says. For that love is what? Benefit. What are the benefits? Forget not is benefit. What are the benefits? Start reading. He says, Forget not is benefit. Who forgive number one benefit? Who forgive all my iniquities? Who healed all my diseases? That means that all my sins, all my iniquities, all my past, present, and future sins, he wiped it away by the blood. Who forgive all my iniquities and who healed all my diseases? Who redeemed my life from destruction? Oh my God! Who crowned me with loving kindness and tender mercies? Who satisfied my mouth with good things? Oh, and my youth is renewed like a eagle. When people are looking like 60 years old, I'm still looking at 18. Don't, 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 can I ask you a question? Don't you think I look like 18? Why do you think my wife is running all over me? He said, I don't see no more. I don't see no more guts, no more stomach. I see sit back now. I mean, I don't see. I, 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 I see. I look like 17 years old now. Oh, can I have to see your driver's license and make sure you are not 17 years old? Hallelujah. It was just ah. Hallelujah. I see, I will show you how to be sustained, sweet, sustained again. So I have to take him to the Lord. And I say, hey, look at Jesus. When you look at Jesus, he will bless the source of that you will, he will renew your youth like an eagle. I see them working in that same plan today. That's why they were asking out. Are you 20 years old? Hallelujah. And I know I'm, I'm giving the, and I'm looking at all my congregation too. I saw Sister Brenda came in. I said, wow. I said, hey, Sister Brenda looks like 25 years old. I said, the world is working. This world is working. We know this world is working. I we saw what I'm not working is in this morning. We said, wow. You are a pastor. You look like a pastor. I mean, everything was just shining. This thing, because this word of God will make your youth like an eagle. Amen. It will renew your youth. It will, the blood of Jesus running over your veins. The word of God that you are hearing day and night and meditating day and night. It will keep you strong. It will wipe away all things. It will wipe away all sickness. It will wipe away disease. It will wipe away shit. It will wipe away all your struggles. It will we turn your life around and God will do great things in your life. Hallelujah. Can we give him praise this morning? Can we just lift the stand on our feet and, and just worship him this morning? Because he's worthy to receive glory. He's worthy to receive all the adoration. He is the Lord of our God. The King of glory. The Lord of Lord. Lord God of majesty. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy of all the adoration. Give him praise and worship him. Worship him. Thank him for his goodness. Thank him for his mercy. 